The original soft shell jacket came from Buffalo. This was the first jacket created where waterproofness was second to breathability. According to popular belief at the time, the only way to stay comfortable on demanding adventures was by using a jacket made with a waterproof breathable membrane like Gore-Tex. But the Buffalo jacket, which was not waterproof, worked so well that it didn't need a huge marketing budget as the users promoted it better than any ad campaign ever could. When Patagonia coined the term soft shell, this new concept was introduced to the general population and all the mainstream companies scrambled to offer their own versions of a soft shell, which were essentially hard shell jackets with a fleece lining laminated to them. This is what destroyed the term soft shell and gave us the bullshit jackets that we have today. So let's discuss the qualities of a real soft shell jacket. One. A real soft shell must have a micro pile fleece interior. This specific type of fleece has a minimal surface contact, which means even when the fabric is damp, it feels dry because the spikes are the only thing that touches the skin, and these little spikes dry almost instantly, which makes the jacket feel dry and comfortable, even if the fleece is damp. Two, the exterior must be a highly breathable and wind resistant fabric. This does not include fabrics with a waterproof breathable membrane like Gore-Tex, Event, or Windstopper. It does, however, include ripstop nylon or polyester fabrics that have a simple DWR coating. This exterior wind-resistant fabric is necessary to create a microclimate inside of the jacket. When you're hiking or climbing really hard, your body creates a lot of heat. The interior fleece traps a thin layer of warm air against your skin, while the wind-resistant exterior fabric prevents the wind from pushing this thin layer of warm air out of the fleece. Three is how you wear the jacket. In order for the micropile fleece to do its job, it must be worn against your skin. If you're wearing a polyester or wool shirt underneath your soft shell and you get wet, you will feel wet because the fleece is unable to suspend the dampness away from your skin with those little tiny micropile fleece spikes. In other words, a proper soft shell will replace two or even three layers of clothing, which means you can move faster due to less weight, you have more freedom of movement, and you don't have to stop to add or remove layers based on the weather conditions during your climb. This is the key to a soft shell. A true soft shell breathes good enough to wear in dry weather. It will always protect you from the wind, and although the interior will get damp in a rainstorm, this dampness will be no worse than wearing a hard shell, which traps almost all of your sweat due to the waterproof membrane layer. And if a soft shell gets totally soaked, it'll still provide warmth, similar to how a wetsuit works. Four. A soft shell jacket must have a hood. If you are wearing a hoodless jacket and it begins to rain, and all that cold rain will be funneled down into your jacket via the giant hole on the top, if you then put on a hard shell jacket, you completely defeat the purpose of owning a soft shell. Five, I have said this once already, but it needs to be repeated. No waterproof breathable membranes. Even though gear companies try really hard to make us believe that Gore-Tex and Event breathe, you will quickly learn that any anaerobic activity will easily overwhelm your jacket and you will get wet from your own sweat. Soft shells allow liquid water to escape while waterproof breathable membranes in hard shells can only handle water vapor. Let's look at some examples. The Marmont Ether jacket is a fantastic soft shell. The Arc'teryx Venta AR jacket shouldn't even be considered a soft shell. The Buffalo Alpine jacket can be used for mountaineering. The North Face Apex Bionic jacket should only be used for going to the mall. The Paramo Fura Ascent windshell combined with a micropile fleece like a Patagonia R1 hoodie creates a very versatile soft shell. The Gore Bikewear Power Vest? What the f***? That is not a soft shell. So what is the best soft shell in the world? You decide. You now have the knowledge to find a soft shell that perfectly fits your needs. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Goodbye and be safe. Oh, I see some bigger trees. Okay, so we're finally just getting everything set up. Justin and I have pretty much just been hanging out all morning, bumping and grinding into <laughs> each other the whole time.